where we want to go with BIM technology as an industry. And I'm not talking about just MEP, I'm talking about the overall construction industry is going to require content, content, content. You cannot get there. There's a lot of CAD packages out there, there's a lot of tools out there that are pretty cool, but they're lacking that one thing, that one commonality, okay? But you need to have dimensional data to be able to do what you need to do in BIM. You need to have performance data to be able to do um, analysis, both pre-construction and post-construction. Cost, labor, material cost associated with the items. Submittal data. Why, cannot we, why can we not create a submittal package from our services? Okay, that'd be nice to do. We're looking at that. O&Ms, be able to have the model, have a hyperlink that links back to right, a service. Where do, I, where do I source this bearing? I don't know, whatever it is, okay? To do that, the data has got to be consistent. Can't be changing on you. Okay? It's got to be supported and it's got to be maintained. All right? There's a lot of data solutions I, I see on the web. Uh, ExtraCAD is actually one of them. In fact, that was one of the original intents of ExtraCAD was to post data and have users share, share data. Um, to be able to spend the time and the effort to put in the data content correctly for an integrated solution to take us to where we want to be in BIM, and I mean takes where we want to be, I'm talking about today, I'm, I'm talking about people that right now are implementing uh, some of our solutions and uh, are bumping into data issues where the CAD guy, for example, created a bunch of CAD mech components very quickly because he wanted to draw them, and now they buy a CAD mech and they want to estimate those, but there's no labor tables hooked to them, okay? Or maybe they copied and they were, the labor tables are pointing to something else that's even worse, okay? So to be able to manage that is a big part of the data initiative that we've got. And I gotta say this, um, if it was easy, someone would have done it by now, okay? I say that to Greg all the time. You know, when things get tough, man, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it, right? That's what makes it worthwhile. Doing the data initiative, it takes a lot of resources, it takes a lot of those people that I mentioned earlier in the PowerPoint that know the industry, that were project managers, that were estimators, that were um, you know, CAD managers, to be able to pull that knowledge together in a data set and make it usable. Okay? It takes a lot of money and a lot of investment to make that happen. So we created a uh, sub-company at TSI called Building Data, for which Lewis has been um, heading up for us. We're going to be unveiling between some between now and the end of the year our data content website, okay? It's called buildingdata.net, building-data.net. If you go there now, you're just going to get one screen page, no login. Um, however, through the pricing model that we've got, we would like to get participation from the manufacturers, and we do have some already. You guys hold the key to unlocking the potential of what the manufacturers can offer to you as a customer using and buying their products, specifying them, design, build, putting those things into the program. In the industry of the data content, it's kind of interesting. It takes a lot to just go on a limb and say, let's go ahead and build a bunch of content and hopefully they'll show up. You know, let's go ahead and build a bunch of content and we'll support it forever for free. Okay. In terms of where BIM needs to go and we want to take it, that's not possible to do that. I wish it was, but it's not possible to do that. So who's going to pay for this stuff? Okay. We've got a pricing model that is going to pay for this initiative through basically three ways. The first is through paid support. I'm not talking about raising your support contract amounts, I'm just talking about we've chosen to take a portion of that and build data content, okay? And you're gonna benefit from that by being on support. You're gonna get data content as part of that. The next part is to get the manufacturers to pay to host the data, to building data, and in doing so, that'll be free to you as a, as a support 
uh, login, password, access, you have access to that data that the manufacturer puts it up there. Okay? I think we've come up with a good plan that's going to make the software more valuable for you, okay? Without having to dig into your pockets and ask for things that are pretty standard out there that we can get manufacturers to help participate in this. At the same time, if it's specialty stuff, very one-off, and the manufacturer's not interested, it's available for download at a cost, okay? It can't be done for free. I've looked at it. If it was easy, it'd already be done by now, okay? Up to this point, we've seen software manufacturers put enough data content in there to sell it. Sound familiar? Anyone know a software package like that? Okay. We want to make it available not only to sell it, but to put more data in there for what BIM promises to do and where we want to see BIM in terms of all things I just mentioned earlier. Okay. So this is a model of uh, roughly how this is going to roll out when you guys see it. Um, right now, in the data set, 40, remind me exactly. Yeah, about 49,000 line items, OK? And that's representing the blue of the existing data. The conclusion of this show, shortly after the show, we'll be posting a new data set that is going to enhance our existing data that we've got currently. We've had reports over the last year of um, you know, mis missing price and labor code, maybe something like that, Main mainly price codes, Harrison codes, or maybe an item that uh, Harrison didn't have a code on. We've now put that data in there. We've uh, completed catalogs that maybe MAP didn't have a pattern for it. We've actually took the initiative to model that and put the component in there to fill out a catalog. That data set will be posted. It's available uh, for anyone who's current today to go download that, okay? That's the baseline. That's the baseline for the data set. The, what is that, orange, I guess it is. That's the additional data content you'll get as a support payer, okay? Every year, you know, I anticipate every year we're going to give, uh, you know, more data content. And the model that we're looking at is basically a, a, a kind of a credit system, okay? So that you'll get so many credits, you can go pick through the libraries and download content based on credits. All right? The next one is the green one, which is probably the most important one, is going to be the data content that's going to be sponsored by uh, the manufacturer. We've already got some manufacturers on board for this. So your current support user, you've got access to building data, okay? You've got this base set of data that you're going to download. You've got your support contract data as part of that. And in the manufacturing area, the manufacturer would have all their data sets, and we're going to download those, okay? Then the last is the optional content for a user to go ahead and just purchase one off, okay? And just basically buying, buying credits to, through the portal to be able to buy content. We cannot conquer BIM, we cannot get to BIM, we cannot provide BIM solutions without the data content that's going to support what the person wants to actually put in there and order and get that thing delivered and have it delivered in a way that you can pull it directly from a report, okay? Unfortunately, we can't do this for free, we need your help in getting the manufacturers to help us participate.